Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, The Easter Eggs and MCU Cameos Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, we're assured, is the last time we'll see this iteration of everybody's favorite team of galactic superheroes. That doesn't mean we won't see the characters independently again. Just as in the comics. Superhero team-ups are fluid, with members leaving and joining as the mood takes them or circumstances dictate. Writer-director James Gunn is leaving the franchise to concentrate on his new job, co-steering DC's screen output, so for now, at least, we can wave goodbye to the Guardians as we know them. But not before we take a dive into all the sweet, sweet Easter eggs laid about their tear-jerking farewell of a trilogy finale. Let's hunt. Warning, spoilers ahead. If Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 was the film in which you hoped Howard the Duck might finally take a bigger role in the MCU, you might be left feeling disappointed, but he does get a customary cameo. First seen among the collector's exhibits in his museum on Norway in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 1, Howard is seen again in Vol. 2 partying on Contracture. All before popping up to fight alongside the Ravagers. Avengers and everybody else during the Battle of Earth against Foe Thanos in Avengers, Endgame. In Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, Howard the Duck is seen playing poker alongside Kraglin and some other familiar faces when Kraglin is asked to provide help on Norway. Alongside Howard at the poker table, you'll spot another familiar face, the broker from Vol. 1. In that film, the shop owner from Xandra initially agrees to buy the orb from the Ravagers intending to flip it to the Collector. But when Star-Lord steals it to cash in instead, the Broker refuses to take it after learning Ronan and the Accuser is also after it. Christopher Fabank who plays the Broker also showed up in another popular Disney property recently, Star Wars. He played the incarcerated Olaf in Anders' Outstanding Prison episodes. One more face around that poker table might seem naggingly familiar. If you watched the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special shown late last year on Disney+, Plus, you might have recognized a certain Achenonian musician. Bzermik Tokilok is frontman of the band seen performing songs on Norway during the holiday special, and wrote a song about Christmas and Santa Claus with lyrics that were inaccurate. He later performed a song with Kevin Bacon brought from Earth by Drax and Mantis as a Christmas present for Peter. Bzermik Tokilok is played by real-life musician Rhett Miller. When the Guardians head to the High Evolutionaries Orga Corp, Alternate Gamora points to a character with a carrot wire head and says, Let's kill that one that looks like a carrot to show we mean business. While there's a rabbit superhero known as Captain Carrot among the DC roster, in the Marvel comics there's a universe in which Groat is a giant carrot named Root. Instead of I am Groat, he says, I am Root the orange root vegetable version of Groat appeared in the Mighty Captain Marvel number 127. When Gamora is explaining the high evolutionary to the rest of the Guardians, she says that as well as creating the Sovereign. He also created other societies. Two of these she names as Zeronians and Anaman. In the comics, the Zeronians were a peaceful race whose king, Randor, turned himself into the perfect warrior, known as the Space Parasite, via mutation caused by radiation from their planet's sun in order to thwart an attack. After, needing to feed off the energy of his bested opponents to survive in his new form, he leaves the planet in search of stronger adversaries. He comes up against the Hulk. His people eventually destroy his ship in an attempt to stop him. Randor's storyline saw him cross the paths with the leader, set to make a return to the MCU for the first time since 2008's The Incredible Hulk in Captain America, New World Order, and The Collector. The Animans comic book history, meanwhile, positions them as servants of the High Evolutionary. They're a group of anthropomorphic animals that included Buzzard, Crushed Hussein, Spinneret, Komodo, and Flying Fox. There's also a group of similarly anthropomorphic supervillains known as the Unni Men whose enemies included Daredevil, the Avengers, and the X-Men. When we see the High Evolutionary experimenting on animals to mutate them, he does so in chambers using a mist that is reminiscent of Terragenesis, 
the process in humans go through to activate their latent inhuman genes to become meta humans. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the High Evolutionary is attempting to create perfect beings. We see an ordinary tortoise undergo a procedure in a glass cylinder into which a pterogen mist like gas is pumped. A transformation occurs, that turns the tortoise into a, very angry, humanoid creature. He does the same later with the kangaroo. In humans, who have long featured in the comics, were brought to the screen in the ill-fated TV series of the same name. It lasted a season, but we have since seen a version of Black Bolt from the show pop up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness as a member of the Illuminati. Suggesting that the series and the concept of Inhumans has not been erased from the MCU via the cancelling of this series. High evolutionary minion Warpig is voiced by none other than Judy Greer. This is notable because Greer is already in the MCU as Maggie Lang. Scott Lang's ex-wife and mother of Cassie Lang. Cassie Lang has just gained her own superhero wings in the recent Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. One of the rescued child slaves of the High Evolutionaries is referred to as Phyla. In the mid credit sequence, she's seen as one of the newest members of the new Guardians of the Galaxy lineup. In the comics, Phyla Vell is the daughter of Marvel, who we met in a different incarnation to the character's comic book form in Captain Marvel. Played by Annette Benning, we learn very little about Phyla in Gox Volume 3 but she has similar white blonde hair to her comic book counterpart. In the comics, Philavel is created from Marvel's DNA and becomes a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, just like the movies Phyla does. She also has a relationship with Moondragon, the daughter of Drax the Destroyer, who Daniela Melchior was thought to be playing in the film. Melchior is in the movie, but she plays a character working for Orga Corp charmed by Star-Lord. In Got Vol. 3, Drax takes a paternal role with Phyla and her fellow slave children. An adorable new pet critter is introduced in the movie, who Adam Warlock takes a shine to. Blurp is a F Saki but did anyone else notice Blurps? His name was revealed by James Gunn, resemblance to Trevor Slattery's cute companion. Morris, from Shankai and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Okay, Blurp has a mouth and eyes, lacking on Morris and four ears where Morris's four wings are, but could they be related distantly? Morris is a mystical Digiang from the realm of Tarlo. But we're dealing in genetic experimentation in this film so anything's possible. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 doesn't quite deliver the Kevin Bacon cameo we might have wanted after his appearance in the holiday special. But it does reference him in a neat way. In the movie's post credit sequence, Peter's grandpa is perusing a newspaper with a headline on the back. Which reads, Alien Abduction with subtitle, Kevin Bacon Shares All. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is in cinemas and IMAX now.